really been at peace or at rest with those assurances coming from our electoral commissioners. Mm. And so um, my conclusion, therefore, is that it is not about the words that are uttered. It's about the structures that are put in place. It's about the conduct uh, of you know, everybody, all stakeholders, political parties, and workers at the Electoral Commission, uh, and even civil society in general. It is not those words that will make uh, people go to sleep. It is what the Electoral Commission especially puts in place and how they conduct themselves. It is from those deeds that assurance will come and not the tough talking or soft you know, uh, speeches about how the system is watertight mm. and nobody can rig the election. It is true that our electoral process is that transparent that if you go by the uh, advice that Dr. Farijan used to give, that all you need as a political party to assure yourself that what you have at the end of an election is indeed a, a, a reflection of your popularity is to be vigilant. I mean, if you monitor the processes the way you are supposed to monitor it, it is not as if people will not attempt to manipulate the system. Workers at the Electoral Commission, either through the sanctioning of their bosses or not, just because they are human beings, at every step of the way, when they have an opportunity, may attempt to manipulate the system. But it is the vigilance of the political party that can stop that. You know, so the system may be that watertight, mm. but it does not, you know, insulate itself from manipulation when people want to manipulate it. But the assurance comes from the vigilance of the political parties. But so far, we as a political party, and I'm not just speaking for the NDC. I know because I've had other political parties also express similar concerns. I've actually even had some civil society organizations express similar concerns. And the concern is that so far, by the conduct of the current leadership of the Electoral Commission, the posturing of the current leadership, we are not confident that the process will be above board. And thankfully, we still have time. We hope that the attitude of the current leaders of the Electoral Commission will change. They will be more accommodating. They will be more open-minded. And they will be less confrontational, especially when they are dealing with some you know, political parties. Look. The Electoral Commission's first test was the referendum, which they botched. Anybody in this country who followed that referendum cannot be proud of the process, even as people are proud of the outcome. Because generally, it seems to me that many people wanted regions. And so if the outcome ensured that more regions were created, people can be proud of the outcome. But nobody can be proud of the process. I mean, some of the things that we saw are things that we have ridiculed neighboring countries and other African countries with. The multiple voting and the connivance and collusion of electoral officers are still on social media. I mean, are videos that are still on social media. And that, for me, should have given worry for the Electoral Commission to assure us that you know, they have learned their lessons and they will improve. But when the Electoral Commission comes out to give it a clean bill of health and suggest that nothing untoward happened you know, during the process, then you are left with the, uh, you are left to wonder if indeed these people know what is expected of them. Then from the, uh, what do you call it, uh, referendum, we had the Ayawaso by-election. Again, it is not a process that we are proud of. And many people have criticized 
you know, the whole process that culminated into the formation of the Emil Schott Committee and all of that. And I'm sure many Ghanaians were shocked when the Electoral Commission appeared and sought to suggest that everything was above board and everything was all right. And really, the, whatever was happening was much ado about nothing. That, for me, does not give people assurance that you are concerned about certain things that may have gone wrong and you will, you know, collaborate with other stakeholders to ensure that during the general election, we do not have that. Then we have this limited, you know, voter registration exercise that is supposed to take place, uh, I think, next month. Again, the decision of the commission to limit registration to just their district offices mm. is something that many of us are worried about. We think it is going to lead to the disenfranchisement of many voters. Many Ghanaians live in remote areas, areas that make it almost impossible for them to uh, uh, easily access these you know, district offices of the Electoral Commission. And it's not as if there is no you know, record of that particular uh, attempt to guide us. Because when they were going to do the referendum, they did the same thing. They, li they did a limited registration exercise, which was limited to their district offices in the regions that were going to be affected by the referendum. Now, if you compare the outcome, I mean, the number of people who registered, who took advantage of the limited registration exercise to the limited registration exercises we have done in the past. It's nothing to write home about. I mean, for example, if you look at the 2012 limited registration exercise, the turnout was close to 90%. You look at the 2016 limited registration exercise, the turnout was close to 90%. But in the case of the limited registration exercise that this current leadership did before the referendum, the turnout was about 47%. And it was because they limited it to their district offices. And one would have thought that, based on that lesson, they would have been working towards making it more accessible for more people okay. to take advantage of. But unfortunately, right they are doing the same thing, limiting it at the district offices. And we think it is. But, but, but you know, they have added, they said some electoral areas now. Well, now, as some. As a last check, they have they not published some. those electoral right. areas. Mm. They have not also even told us the areas. They say they have the mobile units. They haven't told us the areas that will be covered. So these are the things that make that leave people, mm. you know, to, to, to speculate. And you can only but forgive them for speculating okay, if you do not, you know, cooperate very well with the stakeholders. And then you have the, the, the posturing, the language of the, 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 the commissioners. I mean, we all know that they were appointed by the current president and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the government for that matter. But it does not mean that their posturing should, 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 should uh, uh, leave anyone to doubt their neutrality. But when you have a commissioner go on air and say that one political party, say the NDC, is a threat to our democracy, a commissioner who is supposed to be impartial, no matter the provocation, you expect restraint. You don't expect him to, they had to categorically. Accused, so that's a reaction. No, but you them. see, you are so talking. You, but you think that even when they are provoked. You are talking about a referee. When a referee is provoked, he doesn't go. You, you, okay. you have to show and that I impartiality. I'm not even, I don't even agree that he was provoked. But I'm saying that okay. even when he is provoked, you don't expect I, him to I'm categorically grateful. tell you, tell the whole people. I, I mean, Ghanaians, that the political, the one political party is a that. danger to our, our democracy. Me, I think it, it, the posturing, the posturing so far has been very, very terrible. Grateful. And so these words will amount to nothing if they do not grateful. change some of these Let me things. introduce the Acting General Secretary of the uh, Convention People's Party, the CPP, uh, James Kamala Bonfe, uh, is here with us. Good morning. Good morning. I hope right. you're doing great. God has been good. Yeah, thanks for joining us. But let me go back to uh, Kamal. Kamal, so uh, that's uh, the reaction from um, uh, Honorable Suhini. D but the assurance from the Electoral Commission, something that should assure voters that in 2020 will have a clean, credible election? Well, thank you so much, Bright. And once again, very good morning to you. Good morning to Suhini and good morning to my brother, Governor Bonfe, as well. Um, to the cherished viewers out there. It's been a long while. Mm. Right. 
Before I set off, let me wish my very good friend and brother, the minister in charge of education, a happy birthday, wherever he is. Today is his birthday. Anyway, Honorable Napo. Oh, uh, okay, Dr. Bokuba. Uh, uh, doctor. You see, right, it's, 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 it's sad sometimes when we, as critical stakeholders, want to paint a picture out there that each time, depending on where we sit, defines our position regarding a national institution or an institution which is supposed to appear nationalistic and, of course, serving all of us. Once you sit here today and you are deemed to be properly sitting in a position of an opposition person, then your comments point to a certain direction. One who sits here today, he's deemed to be in power, his comments point to a certain direction. You get it? When we do this, then we will not together build a healthy institution of, I mean, that we expect, in this case, being the Electoral Commission. No. Right. Well, maybe in opposition, I had my stance. Okay? In opposition today, my brother had his stance. That's how it goes. However, I am going to say that we should look into our democratic dispensation and see how we're going to get it, see it grow. Yes, why? Fallibility is seen all the time. People, of course, become fallible and sometimes they would have to come out and apologize. No one is perfect. Those things could be seen. But if you paint a gloomy picture out there as if something is not completely right, when you yourself is supposed to be chastised for certain conducts. My brother talks about social media and how the Electoral Commission poorly conducted the referendum that we saw, which created the new regions, and talks about pictures flying on social media, and talks about this. And of course, the last time I checked, the Electoral Commission had called to say, that, look, let us investigate some of these matters. It is a process. We have to investigate to find out. And in fact, the people and the pictures that we see, we cannot say with all certainty that some of them were even our staff. So it ought to be investigated. This information is out there. But he, tell, he doesn't tell, he paint that picture. My own brother, the flag bearer of his own political party, presidential candidate of the NDC, his essence John Dramani Mahama, former president, was on social media showing how he had voted. When, in fact, Article 49 teaches him better. He's not talking about that one. Somebody who is a critical stakeholder, a flag bearer of a political party who has been president before, you go to vote, and which is supposed to be a secret ballot, enshrined in the constitution of the Republic of Ghana, which you know better. You were on the social media showing people how you voted. It was there. The pictures are there. But, but are you going to deny this? Denied that, uh, that was right. How well, does that even picture was done? No, it, it does. Okay. Why? It does. You are talking about electoral malpractice. You are talking about how it was conducted. We all owe it a duty to behave ourselves. We all owe it a duty to ensure that regulations and laws put together to ensure that we have sanity in our electoral process is, is, is seen. And I'm giving you an example of a statesman who had his picture on social media. No one is chastising him. But you sit here the electoral commissioner had done, or the commissioners had done what they could do. Yes, like I said, fallibility could be seen at the point. People can make mistakes. If those things have come, we've never had a perfect destiny. You started off very well, from Afarijan to whoever. We've had all challenges. Reforms have actually been, uh, uh, been, been given. To the extent that Supreme Court, the Apex Court of the land, had at the point will say that, look, let us try to institute certain reforms so that we will try to better the trend in terms of our electoral process. All these things we've gone far. But if we sit down and take an entrained position that, oh, somebody's posture, this and this, that and that, of course, at the end of the day, it wouldn't augur well for all of us. Why? IPAC, of course, which is not grounded in law even. But then, of course, your party has membership. Political parties go. But the laws that we have, my good brother is always a, 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 a member of IPAC. He attends IPAC, which is a lot. You understand? And they discuss issues. They agree on the way forward. The Ayahuasca West was one example you gave. In fact, even the date that was agreed upon by all parties at IPAC for the election to be conducted, my good brothers came out and said they were against it again. Meanwhile, they were in the meeting, represented by Bidzedin. So you see, when you start doing this, 
and the person who you are pointing such accusing fingers when in fact they are frivolous comes to respond then you say hey for him he shouldn't speak we cannot do it. i'm not holding brief for easy but i'm saying that together we can build a stronger institution together we can build a credible electoral uh, uh, if you like commission that we all need then we can move on but it shouldn't be that because i am in opposition because i didn't appoint this person and so and so person appointed then let me go out there with or without any evidence chastise the person malign the person bring the person down then at the end of it that, that institution would not be chased that is the point i'm making but of course we all owe it a duty from the president to every citizen of this country he talks about political parties who are supposed to be vigilant, who are supposed to put the electoral commission in, on, on its tools. No, it's not just political parties. There are other critical stakeholders. Yesterday, the commissioner and her deputies and other commissioners had calls to visit certain media houses. And I'm sure pretty soon they will be coming to your areas because they find you as critical stakeholders as well. The citizens of this country are very important to us. That is why when the president was being inaugurated, the investor of the president, he said something. He said, don't be spectators. Be citizens and not spectators. Let us all be watchdogs. Let's all be able to contribute meaningfully towards the development of this country. It means that citizens are stakeholders as well. He talks about civil society organizations. They are. There are other, you know, international bodies who, of course, are all watchdogs. We look at it and see how it goes. For me, I believe that Ghana, we've come a long way. 27 years of our democratic dispensation is a long haul for us who've done well and at the end of the day we were not going to get it perfect whoever comes let's move on what happened and Charlotte Osei left the law the EC is largely governed by laws and you know they cannot do anything on their own they come to parliament you are a member of parliament they come to parliament to get you past CIs for them to be able to work and in fact, they even have constitutional provisions that guide them on what to do. That is why I cited Article 49 on how you should even vote. At the end of the day, it is not somebody within someone's whims and caprices that he or she gets up to do whatever he wants at the Electoral Commission. They have even gone an extra mile from Afarijan to wherever to institute this IPAC for transparency to be what? Read into what they do for them to come in. Yes, some person comes and you say, I won't give you a briefing space. The person will also have to respond at a point. However, I am not for confrontational, you know, sins. I am, in fact, of course, I will also admonish the commissioners. It's not everything that we respond to. Do your work diligently. As you have promised, it's going to be watertight. Let it be watertight. And I tell you, you, the political party, or whoever is contesting, whether independent or whatever, do your work well. Make sure you go out canvas. Make sure you do it well, then we all move on. We will get there. But let us not paint a gloomy picture out there as if the Electoral Commission is actually uh, not, 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 not on its, uh, as it were, um, sound footing. It is. Okay, grateful. Camila, the, the AC chairperson is assuring that 2020 will be watertight. Uh, the suggestion by some is that, well, words can be said, but perhaps uh, actions should rather show the systems can be there, but action should show that uh, indeed we'll have a watertight 2020 election. Right. Uh, Mrs. Jean Mensa has no option. It is that those words that were uttered by her are the dictates of our national constitution and the aspirations of the people of this country. In this Electoral Laws of Ghana, published by the Electoral Commission with support from the European Union in 2014, there's um, the, the, third, the third paragraph in the preface. There's a statement there that is quite instructive to this uh, discussion. It reads, there is no perfect electoral system. So making improvements to the system is always an ongoing agenda. Changes to electoral laws and practices are always made through a process of building consensus among a broad variety of stakeholders through dialogue and consultation. This is necessary to boost confidence 
in the electoral process and enhance its integrity. Right? Election is a process and not an event. It involves a wide and diverse range of stakeholders, including but not limited to political parties. And so it is important that we appreciate at the heart of elections is contestation for power. And the attitude of our country and Ghanaians, particularly in relations to power, has been that power is an end, which is a complete misconstruction of what power is supposed to be. And for the 26 years that we have practiced this fourth Republican dispensation, the parties that have led this country have shown that they have no understanding of power beyond it being an end in itself. But a proper appreciation of power will tell you that it is supposed to be a means to a certain end. Those ends are about providing the quality, improving the quality of life of the people, providing the basic means to life, allowing every Ghanaian to aspire and grow to the, I mean, the fullest of their potentialities. How have we done? Those should be our concern. The promises that we have made since 1992, elections after elections, what level of percentage have we been able to meet? How constructive have we been? The legal architecture that governs this country, problematic as it is, what sincere effort have we made to alter it, adjust it, to suit our growing demands as we move on? You see, no nation, no nation, and I mean no nation, has been built or progressed with insincerity or without adhering to certain credible principles. And that is what this country is lacking in. What Jim Mensah has said should not be taken in bad light at all. We should all be endorsing it. And this is not the time to attempt to feed in things that are not sustainable. And I'll respond to a few of them. Prior to the appointment of these three executives, mm. we know a certain level of history, what happened. They were not the only ones that were appointed. There was a fourth person who was a member, who was part of the four other commission members. And it's important that we appreciate that. The Electoral Commission, right from the word go, has never been a one-man thing. In fact, the entrenched clause that establishes the Electoral Commission, Article 43, reads, there shall be an Electoral Commission which shall consist of A, a chairman, B, two deputy chairmen, and four other members. If you read 43 clause 2, the members of the commission shall be appointed by the president under Article 70 of the 1992 Constitution. In fact, the president appoints all of them in the same manner. What it tells you is that in terms of the, the, the electoral commission, its power, its authority, is actually exercisable by the seven-member commission. Of course, we have the primus inter pari principle, and you have the uh, first among equals ten, that every team must be led. And the constitution makes provisions for that. But the chairperson of the electoral commission has no right, and I emphasize, has no right, and cannot take any decision without the six other members of the commission. And this has been the practice. So when we isolate the chair, or two of them, as though they reserve the right, they have the power, to take decisions and they can get away with those decisions i'm sorry it's a uh, it is it is it is a pitiful misconstruction of our constitutional exercise what did we do to the uh process the, the appointment of these people right from day one when they were appointed we called them names and we want to do everything to if you like uh um vindicate our positions ahead of their appointment. And I see that line. So don't, don't rule that out. The examples that have been said, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, my brother, um, Honorable 
the honorable member of, member of parliament for Tamale South. Tamale North. No, Tamale North. Alluded to some, some, some points that are incorrect. In the 2018 limited registration exercise, the 47 percent that uh, got registered mm -hmm. was limited to the the parts. The six regions. That the, yes, the areas, not the, all the six regions. Okay, not even all the, six. the limited areas. So the area Bunu East, that there, are, uh, I think there are nine, uh, six or nine, or nine. I'm not sure. But I can check it. But about nine. Oh, no, sorry. It's I think it's eleven. 11 constituencies in the Blue East. So it was limited to that area. Savannah, it was limited to that area. It was limited to Northeast. It was li limited to Savannah. It didn't include the Northern region. It didn't include Western region. It, it, it was limited to North and OT. But put that aside. Projections were made. Projections are not actuals. And when the Electoral Commission undertakes an exercise, People decide to go out and vote. People decide to go out and register. You cannot blame it all on the EC. But of course, there is need for improvement. So when there is a challenge and there is an issue, and you make it look as though it is blameable on these executives who, have, who, who are there now currently, mm -hmm. I think that you are, not doing them, uh, you are not doing them any good, and you are not doing the country and the system any good. But it's not that they took the decisions. That which decisions? For instance, you, you're referring to this issue of uh, the turnout for the um, uh, limited registration. The, the, the key ingredient is that the district officers are sometimes located far away from uh, uh, citizens. And I, so was, I was coming when, to... When uh, you limit the, the, the point to uh, these district officers, you might end up disenfranchising a uh, certain people. Very, very true and legitimate. And that's the argument he made. Very true and legitimate. Legi legitimate to make. I have made that argument. Mm. <laughs> it is not the NDC alone. In fact, some of us advanced that argument even before the NDC got in. And let me say this. The angle the NDC came from, both at the IPAC meeting and outside, well, I've heard them, and it's, 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 it's sad. It's sad, the angle they are taking. It is rather their posturing, which is problematic. And to correct an impression, when you say that they are a danger to a democracy, and the reasons for which you said that, they respond to say that you are rather a danger to democracy. How do you then uh, attribute that comment to them? You think a referee should react? That's his argument. Oh, our referees react all the time. Yeah, okay, right. if you think a referee, no, no, but referees. Okay, you see, we can we can discuss the, the reaction, please. Mm. We can react. We can discuss the reaction of the referee. Mm. And I, me, I sit here. This thing, what is going on now? Not long ago, the same position. My brother from the MPP side, they did it to Charlotte Osei. It's easy. The position I'm holding now, I held that position then. We did the Hold it. The NDC. That time. We, we, we didn't do it the, the position I'm holding now. The position I'm holding now. They were in support of it. Today, they are adopting a new position. But you see, but you see, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me deal with a, a, a few quickly. If, yes. Quickly and wrap up. Let's At the end of the day, let's get the reactions. issue of the this the limited registration exercise taking place at the district centers was not a decision that they they, they took because they wanted it so. We need to be told the history. And my brother is in parliament. He knows they, they, have, they, they, they have been meeting the EC and the challenges. Jean Mercer's electoral commission inherited non-refurbished technical equipments that are used for registration dating back to 2015. Who was the chairman of the commission? Dr. Farijan. Gina, uh, Charlotte Osei inherited non-refurbished technical issues in 2015 when she was appointed subsequently. From that period to 2018. So they had technical challenges in terms of the equipment that were to be used. That is why they can't I go said, to yeah, electoral Absolutely, areas. they can't sure. go to all the... In fact, they, they, they each, uh, originally, mm. what they do from the start, they go to polling stations, not electoral areas. Mm. It was somewhere in 2015 or 14. They couldn't go to all the polling stations because of these technical issues that they adopted the electoral areas. From areas. In 2016, they did district center registration. It's not the first time they are doing this. 2016, they did 
You see, when we went biometric, one of the decisions we took was that there must be ongoing, what we, uh, Dr. Farajan likes to call, continuous, continuous registration. registration. You know that as, as a people, we don't, we don't follow that. Mm. We have not been doing the continuous registration because if we were doing it, perhaps even this period that has been set aside for limited registration may not have been necessary because the people who turned 18 would have already gone to get registered online. Okay, Kamila, wrap up for me. My point is that, you see, we pick issues in isolation and present them to look good. It is not good for us. I want to advise and admonish the Electoral Commission, as particularly the executive, Mrs. G. Mensa, and my own professor, uh, Bosma Asari. They have been the target. I want to advise them. A you think they've account. been targeted? Yes, of course. Can't you see? I see. Can't you see? They, they, there's an advice in Akan that say if you shot one more, it will be time When your footprints are sought on rocky grounds, you dare not go to play around the sandy area. But this very pro proverb that is, uh, is that is that the reason why, like Honorable Sini said, uh, they should not like uh, they should not react to certain forms. No, no, that it, reaction it, is it different. Exactly what, right. what I'm saying right. is to say that it, it, what it I'm saying exactly is to no, no. Uh, mm. Suini, Suini's and uh, uh, point is different but, from mine. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, <laughs> well, yes, what I'm trying to say is that they should be careful of their steps. Okay, what they do. Now I will then proceed to advise, as the political parties particularly the NDC. The current commission that you have, Mrs. Uh, Rebecca uh, Kabuki Ajalo, was appointed in November 2010. My own mom, uh, 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 Saratu Maida, was appointed in November 2010. In their part. Okay? Please. The commission that is there, and when they come to IPAC to meet with us, Make no mistake about it. Even the great Afarijan did not have a situation where he could dictate and you know push okay. things through when it could not be built or accepted on consensus. Okay, Kabila, I'm grateful. Uh, uh, Laji, come in no, and I then. Thought oh, that. Really? I thought that. Yes, so like, we're all going to have bites on it. Uh, yes, but not see, not long. Just two minutes, and then we can. You move know, on. first of all, I like uh, Kabila's proverb. It reminds me of a similar one in Naba. Ne. Uh, that's to it. Um, the hyena, the drums that praise the hyena sound, they don't like me, they don't like me. It is out of his own doings. This is perception. That, that the drums sound like perception. that. So it is not as if the two commissioners have been singled out like my brother Kabila wants us to believe. I think that, personally, I blame His Excellency the President for what is happening. Because, you see, anybody with the slightest knowledge of conflict wouldn't have even considered Madame Jean Mensah in the first place as electoral commissioner. Why? Because of her history at the IEA and the running battles that she has had with one political party. Your in running the IE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Your the NDC. I just yes. Told his yes. So you see, anybody with the slightest knowledge no, no. of how conflict is managed wouldn't have even considered her, knowing that mm. she has had this consistent, you know, disagreement with the major political party in this country. Mm. Based no, on no, that alone, yeah, now, yes. now, please, you are entitled yeah, to. I'm yeah, saying that anybody with this party, so for, you, for you conflict. Live in. Yeah. For conflict, for, for conflict resolution, you don't, you don't. I mean, if you are, if you are a leader and you want somebody to lead an organization that builds consensus, that operates on consensus, you don't, from the word go, recommend someone that you know is seen to be an opponent by her conduct in her previous life. So that's what I'm saying. I blame the president for it. Then again, some of the issues that I have raised, mm. I mean. It does not show that we are singling out people here. And it does not also show that we are unaware that the Electoral Commission is run by commissioners. No. We are simply saying that by their conduct, and I've given examples of those conduct, you can either disagree or say those things don't matter, 
But you cannot dismiss or discount, you know, the, the, the contributions of those post train to our perception. His that argument they, is that they it's they a commission, not, so it's a decision taken by the commission, not the, the, the What Congress. is the decision so far that has been taken by the commission? Is it, okay, is it the, was it, the, for example, the if, our issue, party, yeah. if our party general secretary goes to the meeting, and then there is a matter, and people are laughing, and he giggles, and he is singled out for, you know, some uh, 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 what rebuke. No. That's not what happened. Please, please, Kabila. Kabila, 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 you see, you may have your problems with, uh, we all followed the media reports. In fact, unfortunately for us, you may have been there, but we listened to the recording. Uh -huh. On radio, yes. the live recording, yes. uh -huh. and we heard the, the sound in the background. Yes. We heard, uh, we didn't even hear, in fact, in the recording, General Mosquito, but we heard the, 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 the attack, I will call it, of Madame Jean Mensa, how she went at the General Secretary. We heard it. You get it. So I'm saying that that is the position. That, 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 those words were not decided at a meeting of the commissioners. The words that she used against our general secretary right. was not decided at a meeting of a commissioners. So when we take her on on that, you cannot say we should remember right. that the other commissioners. When Bosman, uh, 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 what is Dr. the name? Doctor Bosman, sir, Bosman Asari says that you know the NDC is and 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 that's not the only thing that he has said that the NDC is a biggest. In fact. He said so many other things Why did he before we even said before we even before this particular you know uh, if you like right. response okay. that on, we have had problems with okay, that's fine. that we have had problems with. So if we are singling him out and naming the crime that he has committed or the post train the particular post train, mm -hmm. you don't tell us and that particular post train couldn't have been a decision of the commission. I don't think so. So it will not be fair to go accusing the whole commission for a singular act conducted by you know one person. And then the, the, the limited just wrapping up on that. But my brother Kabila right. says that indeed it's true that it is a choice. When elections are conducted, people mm. can either go to vote or not. They can go to register or not. But let's not also forget that that is why we have electoral commission. And the, one of the things they are supposed to do is to make it easy for the people to go out to vote or to go out to register. And our position is simple. As much as possible, some of the transformations that we have seen in, electro, in our electoral system mm -hmm. has never been hampered by lack of funds. In fact, he has been at IPAC long enough and he knows that the reforms that we have had, any time funds is an issue, political parties reject it because we know the cost of war. We know the cost of the alternative is worse than how much we will require to make the electoral system foolproof. And so if they were handed over, you know, uh, 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 technical equipment that were not right, that shouldn't be a reason. We have in the past come together as, you know, political parties to even sometimes solicit support from international communities to get reforms done. Okay, because right. they are in the best interest it, of our democracy. Come on, right. hold your breath. Let Johnny take some comments, and yeah. then you'll come back and do it. I hope so. Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll come Welcome yeah. back. And uh, as some watching the matches are rising, we'll start no, off uh, yeah. with Tilapia. We'll it says, Baby Jet returns. That's what Tilapia is talking about. And you can tell the president with the there. And the president says to him, you are the general captain. And uh, they're laughing. Hati smiles there. There was a U-turn yesterday after Samwajan says, uh, okay. There's been a lot of fire this morning on the set. <laughs> I was at the IPAC meeting, I wasn't. Anyway, Brian, good morning. The president cannot summon the defense and interior ministers over the conflict in Cheriponi district, but can summon Kwesia Pia over Samwajan's resignation from the national team. This early morning, two communities from the Chokosis were attacked by the concombers. Even our vice president, who is from that region, is quiet and cannot intervene. The president says we must be citizens and not spectators. Are the people of Cheriponi not citizens, or is it because we are the minority? Both MPP and NDC Allah will punish them. Karim from Cheriponi is certainly not happy. Right, very interesting the posture of the two commissioners, Jane Mensa and Dr. Bosman Asari, are very problematic, even though we knew their earlier works and by their status, their current positions require them to be neutral. But as of today, we can't see that neutrality. Uh, Longinus, 
in a shaman. Sean Will from uh, Tamale says, the EC boss is playing with everyone in Ghana. She's so arrogant that she forgets she's been paid by the taxpayers' money. We should rise against this tyranny by Akufuado in Jimensa because this escalates just like it happened in other countries. We will not get there. Uh, but these are sad days in Ghana. Imagine a convener of a demonstration house has been ransacked and is car vandalized because he's expressing his constitutional uh, rights. If the NDC was going to be intolerant like the MPP, then David Asante, Ace and Kuma, John Kuma and all would have been beaten at their houses vandalized prior to 2016 election. Mystic in Sawam Edwajiri says, uh, Jin Mensa and Bosman should put Ghana first and stop displaying arrogance. They are not the most knowledgeable people in Ghana, especially Bosman Asari, who doubles as the unofficial spokesperson for the EC. They shouldn't dare try to disenfranchise anyone from registering because that will amount to illegality. When did Opon Kroma become the spokesperson for the EC? Hey, we are dying from unbearable hardships, so Nanado. Thank you very much. Good morning. TV3, who told you power no sweet? Today, Kamal Ding is now working with the Electoral Commission as the spokesperson for <laughs> Madame Jean Mensa. When will the double standard stop? The same people who see nothing good in Madame Charlotte Osse or saw nothing That's good in Madame Charlotte Osse in opposition well, well. and removed her from the office after Nanado was sworn in as president. Now want the NDC to keep quiet when Jean Mensa mis uh, behavior shows she is doing the bidding of uh, President Kufuado. The same way and the same door she used in is the same door she will use out when the NDC takes power. Kalio Man, Hewa, good morning. TV3, I want to tell our brothers in the NDC to stop attacking the EC boss and concentrate on getting a message for Ghanaians because if they continue with their one message that they have built infrastructure, uh, they, they're still showing competence in opposition. God bless MPP in 2020 for you. Bright, election is a process. If you deny people the, uh, the chance to register in villages and remote areas because of your intransigent posturing, you are rigging the election. Stop the Accra thinking. Accra is not Ghana. Paul Agbelosu. I am not sure the objectives, the adjectives used by the EC chairperson will make me trust them. Jin Mensah's posturing is a serious factor to be uh, underestimated. Uh, her language together with the deputy leaves much to be desired. I think the words will be empty if they don't change their attitude to, to, towards other stakeholders. Hamza Efie Kumazungu. That's not one I want comes with saying, Electoral Commission boss Jin Mensah wants Ghanaian elections to be free, fair, transparent, and credible, uh, to be conducted in a country. Let's give her a piece of mind to do her work. Thank you. Kamal Din, somebody says hello for your wonderful submissions. Good morning. Uh, Sir Bright, I am appalled at the posturing of the current electoral commissioner. If an electoral commissioner can say that one major political force and indeed an alternative government is a threat to Ghana's democracy, then she is indirectly telling Ghanaians not to vote for them. Where in the world will you hear that from a referee? Kofi, that's it, in Takwa. TV3 is indeed a descending TV station. God richly bless you. You are a professional. MPP can make Rebecca Kufuado as chair of EC, yet they will still lose. Okay, that's what you're saying. Uh, Aziz Dolai Awa says, Good morning, Johnny Bright and uh, Kabila Bonfe. It's very interesting sometimes listening to Ghanaian politicians. Just three years ago, Specifically, in 2015, the same institution, EC, was bastardized, mm -hmm. vilified, and castigated by the then minority MPP. In That's fact, right. an associate of Let My Vote Count staged a huge demonstration attacking the EC, and today the table of power has changed. And in January 2017, where those same people are singing Shatawale songs for the EC, Ghana is interesting. I'm preparing to cross to Burkina and leave Ghana for dishonest politicians. Ah, Aziz Dunlai and Wah. And finally, maybe, good morning, TV3. Uh, right, please. Please help me beg Honorable Kamal to tell President Kufado to invite the EC chairperson and force her to rescind their decision to limit the <laughs> limited voter registration to only district offices, just as she did to Asamwajan. I really enjoyed every bit of Honorable Alassan Suhini's submission in Damba Hillman from Yagaba. That's, I think okay. we will take the, a pause. The here. EC sure. says it is adding electoral areas. What we are here to uh, see is which areas. Come on, come in. Right. Even when it was a case of we saw it, loved it, and chose it, there was defense for them. You see, I am not for us to go or descend on any officer. If you listened to me earlier on, I had said that, look, the honors lies on us to ensure that we build a credible institution. Like my brother Kabila rightly put it, we should not paint the picture out there as though it is just one person who is the electoral commission, as the NDC is seeking to do. No. 
Jane Mensah well, so is just said that, He just that said that we agree. Yeah. So my point here is that, listen, we've all agreed. But you see, when you when you listen to their posturing, and I could not have agreed the more with Kabila, when he talks about their own posturing, you see, they initiate it. This confrontational thing that he spoke about, and he's still talking about, in fact, who initiated it? Who started it? You call me names, up in the show, even at my appointment level. You call after calling me, after calling me names, then push on, the one you then come in on. and <laughs> tell me to be mute, <laughs> never to talk. <laughs> then give me proverbs of that my conduct is what Asala has warranted this. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. The point is that Ghanaians are watching us and Ghanaians are listening to us. You call you see, if, if, if at the end of the day, if at the end of the day, I was very, very mad. Like we were wrapping, wrapping up. We were wrapping up. Go you see, please go. If at the end of the day, we all refuse to do the honorable thing and the responsible thing by ensuring that we we'll give them the needed support and constructively criticize, it's not as if the MPP doesn't have a take in this. We are critical stakeholders in this as well. And trust me, if the process is not too good, we will talk about it. Okay. And we'll mention it. And we'll talk about it. So you see, the point is that if we then now put those salient matters, important issues like the processes to registration the processes to that to that reasons why we're going to do it at the district level and not at the polling station level if we put all those aside and descend on personalities they will go nowhere that's the message to the ndc and can, that's what they should know so my, here, my point here is that mm -hmm. the electoral commission as we have it today under jane mensa if you look at the reasons alluded to by them as to why we needed to do them at the district level, which were technical reasons cited, which was the reason that they wanted to push or oppose it for us to ensure that there's data that they are going to collect or the data they are going to collect will be kept and kept well so that nobody will be shortchanged because the BRVs needed this kind of, um, you know, um, Refurbishment, refurbishment that's what you want to say. which okay. hadn't been done yet, and the okay. amount of money needed to do that even was exorbitant. They gave all these reasons, but okay. yet you refuse. But they have changed their mind. So you don't, don't let us go there. The EC has so, changed its mind and says that it is no more at the district no, level. No, it is only an we'll improvement. It is, it is. It is. So. It is, it is only an improvement on the stance, even though okay. the district level will still go on. But the letter, uh, some electoral areas will have it. Well. Yeah, They're not a police station. Sorry, okay. The letter area is different from police areas. Okay. okay. From Nantong, that they were briefed yesterday that uh, Nantong town will be given some six days, some, another uh, town will be given. And I know I got briefing also from my constituency secretary last night after their meeting with the district uh, election. So, 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 this is the about criticism that we've been talking about. Exactly. So, the criticism is to improve the system, it's not to single out anybody. Want to demonize exactly. So when we make the point, I like to wrap up. Yes. Somebody's been dangerous to let our exactly. But if the posturing, if the initial, I like to wrap up. up. The initial posturing was as if the suggestion that we're bringing forth was unreasonable. Exactly. The so point if you begin made. to accommodate uh, them, okay. The, the, the I like to wrap up. I like to wrap up. Please, please wrap up for me. Is he bright? Right. Right. So Charlotte was. Oh, oh. come on, Dean. No, no. <laughs> he says, how can you say? <laughs> no, no, okay. he, Please, you're not on the floor. Kabila is the one on the floor. Kabila, please wrap up. These two sides of the same coin. Why can't you say? Because I have said, and I want to say. Charlotte was NDC. So you said right. Charlotte was NDC. Right. No, no, gentlemen, listen. allow CPP to talk. Kabila, please go ahead. It is for Ghanaians to decide. Then you have the right to, to put something. aside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these two sides of the same coin and come back to what makes nations work. Look, the Electoral Commission, together with political parties and other stakeholders at IPAC meetings, presented their program and how they were going to go about it. And we had concerns. I sit here, if the ministers were here, your representative at IPAC will tell you. Mm. I sit very close to my uncle, I said, Ketia, mm. because I'm, good, I'm to inherit him. You understand? <laughs> yeah. And we share a lot of notes. We raise concerns. Are you inheriting the bluff? Honorable Osebo Nsuamua, who spoke from the side of the MPP, raised concerns because, you see, at the end of the day, registering at the district the centers district. is not happening for the first time. And the previous ones, we know what we suffered as political parties because... To galvanize the people to go out there and register, much of it rests with us. In fact, even though the EC is supposed to do the advocacy, a lot of the time we help. In, because we are interested in getting our people out there to go and vote. So it is in response to these concerns that the EC came back and said, 
we will do A, B, C, D. And also appreciate that Ghana is a heterogeneous, you know, in terms of the geography. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have, you cannot have a, a, this thing, an across board thing. And they said that they are going to deal with those isolated instances. Yes. Now, so see, see. Criticisms are not unreasonable criticisms. Oh, oh, can I finish? Can okay, I finish? Can I finish? Go ahead. They, are, they are unreasonable to the extent that you are not only raising critiques, you are ascribing motives which are not founded. They are founded. Exactly. You please, please, exactly. please. I'm, I'm, I'm distinguishing between them. the critique and then ascribing motive. Yes. So the critique you is right. The motive. the motive is what you are. Absolutely. So why should you go ahead? Right. Why should you, you accept it? Oh, please. I <laughs> sat here and watched the two of you. <laughs> Maybe they accept it, but not right. Come on, Dean. I can speak for myself. <laughs> yes. I don't need you. <laughs> Camilla, please wrap up. I have run out of time. <laughs> no, you need. Camilla, please, 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 please wrap up. Please. I have run out of time. Please now, utterances, utterances at IPAC mm. are not limited to just words. And in this particular instance, you see, we sit here as a panel. Why are you talking and I giggle? And I giggle mockingly. We are human beings. I was in the room. I was in the room. I was sitting very close uh, to the uh, Please, 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 please. Up, so don't, don't go there. You right. the, the NBC that he's talking about. Mm. You worked with Gene Mensah's IEA and benefited from Gene Mensah's IEA financially, so technically, many, many years. And even now, you still benefit from it. So your point is what? My point is that this argument about Gene Mensah was a wrong choice. You disagree with that, you go and drop your money. Okay, okay. drop your money. <laughs> 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 you drop your money. to Gene Mensah. Kamila, I was your money. Kamila, I'm grateful. Kamila, I'm grateful. James Kamila, I'm grateful. Is the acting general secretary of the CPP. Kamila, in Abdullah, is a member of the NPP. I like you to hear the MP for Kamila, not a member of the NDC. Gentlemen, I'm grateful. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for your time.